Okay, well, I'm going to start. Uh, I've never spoken to this many people at once, so it's quite a full crowd for me. We might get 11, maybe 20 at my branch. Um, so this is kind of a, a very overview of DocuSign. Some of you already have DocuSign and maybe don't use it. Others, you're able to sign up. Uh, Terry Britton will be the person you have to contact to sign up if you're interested in signing up for DocuSign. Uh, your company here uh, renews in January. It's $150 a year, which is quite a savings off what you would have through uh, Toronto Real Estate Board, for example, or Korea. Um, you would let Terry know. Uh, you need to have an email that you're going to use for your DocuSign. If you're already signed up with DocuSign, you would use the same email and your two um, accounts would merge together so that you can still see your original documents that you have in there. So uh, it's through Terry, it's $150 a year and it's prorated until January. So from January, if you sign up in June, you get half a year off. And then every January it renews um, and it's built to your account. So um, to get started, you would sign up with Terry. Um, she would sign you up. You would get an email from DocuSign saying welcome. Um, DocuSign is one of the preferred suppliers through our Toronto Real Estate Board. Uh, the first sheet um, and Korea. The first sheet kind of shows you how through um, web forms you would link your account to DocuSign so that um, you don't have to keep putting your information in. The second page, I have two sides to it. One saying using DocuSign without web forms and the other side of it says using DocuSign with web forms. So we're going to start with the web, with web forms. Um, so I'm just going to go into my web forms. Oh, I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Debbie White Mills. I'm with Royal Page uh, Connect at your sister company now, and I manage the West Hill location and do their operations. And I've worked with some of the people because I did sell at Royal Page, your community, years ago at the Unionville branch with Karen Gerard and some of them. So in here is what your web forms uh, looks like and to um, add real or to add uh, DocuSign to your account you just click on the add-on services these are the approved people um, through Korea uh, I'm already linked up which is why I have a big green check mark there but basically you would just see a um, see a link like this you would click on it and you basically put in your email address and your password that you use for DocuSign. And that is what the whole first page is showing you. And but it's also showing the price of 248 Canadian. So if you click that, then we've already been billed. That's okay. It's just what you, it's like the one underneath says Korea member pricing. You will not be billed. It knows that you already have an account through your email and your password because you've already been sent it from DocuSign, so you would be fine not to. I mean, you'd be yeah. fine. You still have to link it in order to join it up, and you won't be built a second time. This is yeah. Yeah. Okay, exactly. Pardon me? Just for the DocuSign, yes. Like mine right now, if I unlink it, would be unlinked. Um, I have this one. There's another one, but there's right there. Oh, no. Thank you. So uh, that would then, each time you go in and send a kit, you don't have to keep going in and re-putting in your information um, for the DocuSign. So um, if you're using web forms, basically, uh, like step one says, you, go to the, you can either go to the home page of Treb to get into web forms, or you can go to real through web forms yourself directly. You go into your transaction kits. Uh, you would highlight the kit that you uh, are going to work on, and then you would click this button that says Send To. It's a drop down, and you're going to send it to DocuSign. Now, here you go. 
you shouldn't have to do this, but I think it's because I'm in an area that it's unaware. Yeah. Oh. Okay, so um, in this kit that I chose, there is only one form. So it's an offer document, an offer summary document, but it would say all four forms if there was four forms in there. If you had an agreement of purchase and sale, um, maybe what I'll do actually is I'll cancel this and I'll go back to one that has more. So let's go to, I don't, I'm not sure what these are because people use my kit, not necessarily me. So I will just use this one. So this one is a lease. Uh, it has an agreement to lease, a schedule, and a confirmation of co-op and representation. So I'm just going to put in, I guess, the lease and the confirmation of co-op and the schedule. If you didn't want one, you uncheck it. Okay, and then you hit continue. It should just go through to DocuSign. Are you in your transactions there? I was, yes. So you go, so once you've linked it, you go back to your original transaction? No. So once, once you, yes, yeah, sorry, once you've linked DocuSign for the first yeah. time, yeah, then you go to your transaction kit that you want to send, if you're doing something within web forms. Okay, so I just want to make sure that I have so many things here. <laughs> All right, so my window did not automatically open, and it might be because this computer does not allow pop-ups, but we'll find out in just a second. No. So there was a little link there that said click here if you'd like to go to DocuSign if a box didn't automatically pop up. This is what it looks like. Um, it's imported your document, which is along the side here, that you want signatures on. Now, the fact is that DocuSign does not replace the fact that you have to have communication with your clients and explain the whole form to them prior to them signing, explaining the pre-written portion, all of that to them. Um, basically, that should be explained ahead of time uh, or over the phone. But once this is sent, it's quite easy for your client to um, to fill it in. I'm going to add myself as a recipient so that I can go into my own personal email and then you will see what your client would see after you've sent it out. So I'm going to put in here my name again, but I'm going to put my personal email. So you would put in your client's legal name, that the way that it's written on the offer. And then you would put in their email address um, that they use. It is preferable that everybody has their own um, email. Believe it or not, I've had someone come to me and said, but this couple only shares their email. So uh, you are able to put in a separate name. Um, and you will see that uh, the colors change, that type of a thing. What's that? Sorry. If, they, you, share an email. if they share an email, you can just put a name up here where the name is the legal name of one person, like yeah. my husband's name is David, so I could put in David Mills, put in a, the email that we shared, and then um, I could put in another ad recipient, so I'll show you in just a second. So that's my, oops, that's my one person. Sorry. So I'm going to, oops. <coughs> Add another recipient. So I'm going to click Add Recipient. So I already have one person in here, and now I'm going to make a second person, and I'm going to make that myself, which is going to be a bit confusing, but that's okay. And over here on the right-hand side, it needs to sign. So there's different, you might want to send, if this was a mutual release, uh, and you were the last person to sign it, you might want to send it to your administrator of the office, and she too would get emailed a copy of the completed document after everybody signed. She wouldn't see what it was going through while everybody was signing. Um, so, so now you are in the document just by clicking uh, next, 
And on the sorry, yep. We're not following you. I need to follow that. So how does the sequence work? How does the administrator get it? Get it oh, okay. So I will give my administrator a copy of this. So her name is Jane. So I will add her as a recipient. I know, but okay. isn't she getting everything simultaneously as other people are getting it? No. So, where, so where, where I can show way? you at the end. I mean, it's it's you'll see as we go because I'm going to log in as a client. And then I can log in as myself as the realtor. Um, I can't log into Jane's email because it's it's somewhere else. But I can show you that the end, your client. So if you had five clients that had to sign, they're not getting everything as it goes. They just see what they see, which I will show you. And at the end, once everybody's completed the form and and done their initials or their signatures or whatever it is that you're looking for on the documents, everybody gets sent an email that says, here is a copy of your completed document. So as your administrator, they won't see that Debbie signed and then Jane signed and then Sylvia signed. They're just going to get one document at the end with everybody's signatures. So if I understand you correctly, what you're saying, the software behind, after you in the beginning put all the information in, then the software takes everything through sequentially, and once everything is completed, then sends it out. To everybody that you've added as a recipient. If there's someone that needs to sign, then they automatically will receive a copy. Okay, and they won't see and they won't get an email every time if there's five people that needed to sign. They're not getting updates as each person signs and they won't necessarily see anyone else's initials or signatures. But, don't you but when all is said and done, they will get a complete copy initialed and signed by everyone. Don't you have to set a signing order? For you that? don't have to set a signing order. If you'd like to set a signing order, you can. So you don't have to. You don't have to. It can be a free for all. Whoever gets it first signs and initials first. If you had a signing order and you wanted the husband to sign first and the you know wife to sign second and the mother in law to sign third because you know you need to make the first two agree first. However, that will work. You can set what's called a signing order. So let me just add Jane. I think I already have her on here from another one. And I'm not putting her as needs to sign. I'm going to put her as receives a copy. So when all is said and done, she doesn't see the signing order. She just receives a copy that says it's complete and it's done. Or if you want, once you get the completed copy email, you can send that off to your administrator that way or your deal person that way. That's how that works. There's a little button on the top left here that says set signing order. Right now, this is the order in which we're set to sign if I set a signing order. Uh, what does that mean? So that means Debbie would have to sign first. Until then, Debbie signs. Yeah, yeah, until two. Debbie signs yeah, the, the first one, first Debbie yeah. signs, then it gets emailed to the second person, and then it gets sent to the third person. So if the first person doesn't sign for two and a half hours, the second person doesn't even know that it's there. Does that make sense? So I don't really do a signing order. I let it be a free for all and see who gets to it first, but you might have an instance that you need that done. Okay. So um, then I'm going to click next. And now in here, I have two different names, two different <coughs> colors. So these could be obviously two different people for this instance that may need to sign. I could be in here as, so I'm going to be blue for the realtor and yellow for the client. So on the first page, I would need an initial of the tenant. So basically as this person, I need an initial. You just click it and you drag it to where you would like the initial set. Okay, so it's a recipient is myself. It's a required field. It's something that you need them to do. Um, and then you would go down here. Um, you can, um, you'd need an initial here. Okay. Then on this page, yep. 
Um, so when you, well, let's see if I go to a client the first time and, and I tell them, okay, we're going to be doing this with DocuSign. Do I get them to get some kind of initials and signatures and then input it into the computer? No. Nope. So you'll see when, um, when I pretend that I'm the tenant, how your client's going to see it. Okay? Uh, when the first time that they get sent it, if they've never <coughs> used DocuSign, they are asked to choose or it picks for you um, what your signature is. Your signature is not actually your actual signature. It looks nothing like when DocuSign first came out, a couple of my reps called and said, it looks as if they type in the initials. And I'm like, no, that's DocuSign. Uh, the initials don't necessarily have a large number underneath your signature, but the signature that you'll see in here for myself is not my signature. Um, your signature is actually a really long number underneath, um, and, and uh, that's your digital signature. So the signature that your clients you may see in person will look nothing like uh, it is when they're in doctor's office. That's an agent you put because I know I created my own signature. Yeah, you can if you want. Yep. Yeah. You can. Yeah. You can see the option when you're in there. You can, yes. Like when you log office. in and sign up as yourself, you can go in and you can add your picture. You can add all kinds of stuff to make it personalized for yourself. I, don't see, I think what she means is that you can actually do your electronic signature. Yeah. And then scan it in. Yeah. And, and then it. upload it. And it can be your signature if that's what you prefer. I prefer just let it choose my signature. Yeah, I just want to go a little bit ahead. Um, sometimes we we are dealing with a couple. Yep. So there's a husband and a wife. Yep. But we I have only one email address from the husband or wife. So on the recipient, I understand that we have to just fill out the form, you know, put the information there, and email it to them so they can put the initials. That in that case, we have to add two recipients one yes. husband, one wife. Yes. But the same email, email address. address. So, you could. I mean, the best way is for them to have two right. email addresses. Yeah, but if we have just, like I said, yeah. we have only one email yeah. address. So we put one email address for both, right? Mm -hmm. So every single time that they want to fill out the form, they have to sign into the email address or open up the email. Well, you'll see that an email will be sent saying that and i'm sorry i don't know your name darish darish, darish yeah. okay so it would say that you sent an email to this client and then they would click on it which you'll see as we go forward i'm just right now pretending to be the rep inputting the information that's required so i think after you see the rest of it you'll get a better grasp when i first taught this to some of mine they thought that their client needed a stylus pen and a whole Thing on the other side and it's nothing like that so um, so yeah so if I could just so is it possible to put two initial boxes on there you can put as many initial boxes as you'd like <coughs> so, to each other. yeah so I so let's just uh, pretend here then that I am right so I'm going to be here, that's me, and say that this was another person, I would click to the blue and then I would put that person's signature there. You're putting every signature and every initial that you require for the document from your clients on this sheet of paper now. So if you have five, you're putting five. If you have two, you're putting two. If you have one, you're putting one. All of it goes on here. When the email gets sent out, each client would only get, if I was the yellow, I would get the yellow information to sign up. <coughs> I was emailing it to the blue, only the blue will show up for me to do. It's an action required on my behalf. So it automatically merges the business? Yes. yes. You don't need to no. worry see about at the end. it going. No, it going like that. No, it, it does that, but in the air, and then it all comes together in an email at the end. Okay, so... Um, we could put stuff all over. If you want an initial, you could just initial here if you needed to change. This is interesting. So under the, I mean, um, you can put stuff wherever you'd like. So say that the person decided, you know what, I'm not, I don't want a credit check. So, um, and I should probably show you this. I'll show you this when we go to the one that you don't, um, 
do out of DocuSign because, or, or out of um, web forms. Because when you're in web forms and you're producing an offer to be given to someone else, you have all the terms in it that you want, right? So, so this would be a good example. So I will just do this. As the rep here, I will do my uh, commissioned agreement to sign there myself. Uh, you could have your clients acknowledge now, but this is just to go off to the next side. So I need to flip back and forth depending on who I'm doing and what I need. But I need an initial by the tenant. And I need an initial by the tenant. Then I need an initial on here as the tenant, but I also need to initial this as the rep. So I'm going to switch to the blue and I'm going to change my initial here as the cooperating brokerage. Yep. If you have two clients, Debbie, yep. you, um, you have to you make have space to, for both. Yeah, them you, you just move it over probably. a little bit that way. And then a second one could go there. Right. It kind of wherever you see that line, that's where the initials are going to kind of box under. Debbie, sorry, you just also when you put the initial for you to sign as the rep, yep. right? So how come that doesn't come out just as your initial as opposed to another? Because era? it's um although I'm in DocuSign, it hasn't sent it to me. I don't know how else to explain it other okay. than to say we're doing all the stuff that we need in this document. After I'm done and I say send here at the top right, it's going to send me an email to my business email. Um, it's going to send me one to my personal. I'm going to show you what it looks like from a client and from a realtor. I get that. Okay. But what happens when if they, if you don't put it like in order of signature and initials, et cetera, and they see those arrows, how do they know? They won't the see any arrows. The yellow just sees the yellow stuff. Oh, the so blue just sees the blue are. stuff. <laughs> And I don't know how many colors of the rainbow you can get in here because I've never done more than four. Okay. Um, but it just keeps going. Yellow. So Pardon? You tell them they're yellow. So no, you don't need to tell them anything. It prompts them. It comes up. It says you've been sent an email. Click start. Then it scrolls down to where they have to hit initial. I'll show you that shortly. Yep. You do set a signing order. Yep. And uh, the first recipient signs when it gets to the second one. Will they see? Will they be able to see? You know what? That's a good. I think they can. They would see that the first person already signed, because you've set an order in which it needs. Because I know you can put text in too, right? Sometimes you want them. Yeah. So I'm going to show that after, just because I don't want everyone to get confused, and I think it'll be easier once you see one round. Then I'll go to the one that says without using web forms, because. I mean, I have people that sign their children up for camp and do it all this way and sign their stuff and email it off. And it doesn't have to just be used for business. I mean, obviously, that's what we're using it for, but it can be used for all kinds of stuff. So I'm going to put in here. Yeah. Um, when you do the confirmation of acceptance and you have to put in the date and time, how would you do that? So I'll show you on the next round because I don't want to, I just want to start with the initials and the signatures and the date. They're automatic. And then on the next one, I'll show you how to scratch out a clause if you don't want that clause in for your clients. That way you don't necessarily have to print it and then make the changes and scan it back in. You can do it all from DocuSign. So I am going to, I have uh, signed and now I'm going to do the date. And then I'm going to have my client um, uh, sign here and date here. And then that should be it. So I've done some initials. Um, we've done some signatures. I did a random initial here. Good job. If you put something on a sheet and you don't want it, you can just highlight it like this and hit delete and it takes it off. If you put too many signatures or you put any, you just click on the one that's the mistake and delete it out. Now, so does it just, sorry, that's okay. I think I'm, yeah. when you're going through it yeah. and you're, you're on the tenant portion, you're not Debbie the realtor, you're Debbie the tenant. Yep. Yeah. As far as the information that you're putting on there. Does it therefore just highlight and show you all of the stuff that the tenant 
so that you can quickly scan say, okay, that everywhere that's yellow, I know that I've highlighted the right area for them. Or does it give you both? The gives you everything that you put on there. I think if that's what you're asking. Well, what, so, I, what I mean is, like, when you're quickly looking at it to make sure that you're, you've highlighted yeah. all of the correct areas for them to acknowledge initial or sign. Will it also show where it shows everybody's everybody's stuff. everybody's stuff. yellow, blue, green? Okay, so everybody's okay. That's okay. Yeah. <coughs> okay, so I've got my forms ready. Um, there's actions in here. There is a message here, so I could hit edit message, and then this is what my clients would see. So you could custom take that out and put, uh, you know, please sign an initial. Uh, oops. Uh, I am needing. It's funny when you're on a computer that you don't usually use. I am needing uh, landlord at 3 p.m whatever you'd like, okay? So now I'm gonna say done. That is my message that my clients are going to see. And now I'm going to hit send. Okay, so now that brought me back to my um, realtor link. Sometimes it pops up. I'm gonna go into my email. So this is what I've received and I'm trying to see, this is my business email. So this is what I'm seeing as my realtor. Let me go into my personal first. So this is my personal email. So this is what your client's going to get from you. After you hit send, you're going to, they're gonna click on this. It won't say connect realty. Um, it would say here that um, please sign an initial I'm meeting landlord and if you put your photo in after you get DocuSign and all of that information then it can be more personalized to you um, but I'm basically going to click on here that it says that that I sent myself a document to sign and review so now your clients going to see review they're going to click on review documents if they've never used DocuSign and unfortunately I can't show you that it might say pick um, Pick a signature, okay? It should say pick a signature, and then, and then they just choose one. It's just a random, um, it doesn't look anything like their signature. It, they can pick one, and then, and then they would come to this, okay? And they have to agree to use electronic signature records, okay? And once they agree, uh, they would hit continue. They do have options to finish later, print and sign, decline if they don't want to sign it on your behalf. But I'm going to hit continue for this. So this is what they're going to see. They would hit start on the left hand side and it brings them to what they need. So your clients, it says required initial here. They would click. Okay, so now this is what your clients would see. Now it's saying, hey, what would you like to, because this is my personal and I've never used it personally, I only use it for business. So it's saying to me, okay, Debbie Mills, this is your new adopt your initials. So this is kind of good because this is what your clients will see. Pick a set. You can change the style. If I didn't like that, I could say, okay, you know what? I'm gonna pick something. So I will pick this one. So now that is what is considered my DocuSign initials and signature. My actual DocuSign signature is the number here at the bottom. Okay, that's what tracks it for DocuSign, not this. So I'm now going to adopt an initial, okay? So I'm going to adopt this signature as your client. This is what they're going to see. And again, they're in front of their computer. They can adopt it or choose the one that it chose for me and say, good, I'm good to go and off I go. So I'm going to adopt an initial. So then it, once you choose that, it brings you to your next one. You're required to initial there. I just click there. You're required to sign here. Now, I would like to just show you. So once I hit sign, oh, the date automatically goes in. You'll see once I show you the completed document that the date is there. Yes. Do you know it's jumping right to where you yes. initial? Is there any way of turning that off? No. 
I'm just worried that they're just going to go through it. And Most do. Explain. Most do, because you should have already explained everything in the document to them. This is not a replacement <coughs> of not explaining the document to your client, or this is just guiding to them where they need to initial and sign for you to get the document so that you can send it off. So all those conversations should have already happened. But this, after that, you can scroll up and read. After it. this, yeah, you can scroll up and read. You can, you know, if that's what your client wants to do. Um, but it is basically a here, I need your initials and I need your signature, and this is what you're doing. You've already had a lot of those conversations. So, they can't change anything. They can call you and say, you know what, I signed and I don't want this clause and then send it to you in an email. And then that would be, you'd have to go in and change that and then redo another document for them. Pardon? Or they can say, you know what, I'm not going to click finish. Uh, I don't like that. And I'm going to decline to sign the rest of this. And then it becomes an incomplete document for you in DocuSign. So, so in do, order to get the initial to happen, which is what you were just saying, right? You just click on your initial. Do you do a new document that if they refuse to sign because you've got to make changes? <clears throat> yes. If you're sending someone, your client, a document, when they are putting their signature on, do they see the, bo uh, the box that already has your signature and stuff filled, or do they receive a blank document where it says the Unless you set a signing order, um, I'm pretty sure they just see a blank document, correct? Okay. Yeah? It's just blank. They don't. Okay. And only if you set a signing order. You set a signing order, then you my... say, I have to sign it first. Yeah. And then if you need to sign it next, then she'll see that I signed it. And then if you need to sign it next, then you'll see that we signed it. Um, so just to go through a thing, uh, I don't see your signature on it. Right. Okay. No, but you will at the end when you get the completed document that we've all done. Okay. Okay, so that would be, um, now that that's the last one that I signed, it says signed by DocuSign. There's a large number underneath, and the date shows um, when I've signed. So now I'm done. If I'm your client, I can go up and see all of the initials that I did. There's a DM. There's a DM. If that's what they want to do, that's where I signed. I guess I forgot to put a date there. Otherwise, it would have shown me. So then I'd have to go back in and put a date. Yes? Just in case if they do miss a signature, you just reset you, it and they... If, if they can't miss a signature and hit finish, you as the realtor can miss okay. a signature by not putting it where it needed to be. Like right then, I just did the date. Oh, okay. Okay, so now I'm going to click finish because I'm done. I'm your client and I finished signing. So the date okay. didn't automatically come up. Did you? It did. I forgot to put the date in. So prior to sending it, you would have had to have the date. On dates for, for, what do you I can show you on the next one. Well, I put date, right? You can either put a um, signature, an initial, or a date sign. So I just didn't put it in. I did put it on the confirmation of co op, and when I um, signed there, you saw the date beside it. So the client has to pick that date signed? No. No. As soon as it's initial, the date sign goes in automatically. You, you, pick it before. you just have to choose date signed and drag it and put it to where you want it to show. So, Debbie, yes. Just on that quickly, um, if you did miss, like we just did, we missed yes. the date. And they did all of their um, signatures and initials, everything's fine, but you realize they need to date it. Do you have to go through that process again of saying insert date and then send it back to them? Or yes. can you actually insert the date? Well, no, technically, by law, you would have to resend it to them again. You can, the whole thing, but no, 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 once it's finished, once everybody's completed, you could just upload that completed document back into DocuSign and put the date. And then you have to email it back out to the people with the, so try not to miss anything like I just did on uh, But do you just send them that section or you just send No, you send thing? the whole thing and you just put your date section there and when they hit start, it goes straight to that date and off it goes. <coughs> but if it's the date, you've got to create a new document. Is that right? No, you can, I'll, I'll show you in just a second after you um, 
let me show you what it would look like. Uh oh, sorry, I got too many things going on here. Okay, so this was viewed. So as the realtor, um, sorry, as the realtor, I received this saying um, that I have something here to sign. So as the realtor now, because I'm in my business, as you can see, I'm getting emails. Uh, I hit continue, and now I can hit start. And it's saying to me that I need to sign here, I need to sign here, and I need to initial here, and I need to sign here. And I did put the date beside here, so it automatically, because I went into the document and I've initialed the dates there. Okay, so now I'm going to click finish. I'm going to just show you. So. Mm -hmm. So in here, as the realtor, it showed me that uh, Jane has viewed the document, that I viewed the document. So you can see here when your client viewed the document. So I viewed it seven minutes ago. So you can kind of see and understand where your clients are at. Um, in here is the completed document. So you both your client and me as a realtor get a completed document. So I know it's probably confusing because I am in here um, under myself and under uh, as a realtor. But this is me showing view completed documents. So your client can now see and have a copy of the document with all the initials. So now you can see the initial of the tenant, the initial of the tenant that I've signed in two spots. Obviously, as a realtor, I would not sign here, but I was just putting random things. Um, I've signed in the commission trust. I've signed, or they've signed as the tenant. Again, the initials there. So now you have a completed document that you can either um, send. For myself, I always save the document to my desktop and then send it off. But um, it's not necessarily what you need to do. Um, so if, if you're looking at the completed document, yes, and at that point you notice the date is missing, then you would need to. Then you go, oh, okay, I screwed up here. You got to do it all over again. Well, they would need to. Right. You like, need to put a date in there. Yeah. Yes. So you would have to. I would save this um, attachment myself as a as a. Um, I would save, sorry, I would save the document and um, email it. Um, I would save it to my desktop and then email it out to my client. Not to, to put the data. To ask them to put the data. Then they don't have the job to sign access. No, no, no. So you would you would go into it, and you would um, you would go into it, and you would um, add the date portion into it, and then resend it to your client. I would put that current date. You would put the current date. Let's hope that none of you forget the date. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No. I uh, yes, it would create a new envelope. And would that cause problems later? No, you could go in and delete your old envelope if you want. That happens to me where we update, but when I go back in. Yes, and it creates a second envelope for you. But it overwrites the first number. Pardon? It overwrites the first document number. So I was just worried if it never came down to it, would that cause problems? I do not believe so. Knock on what I have not had that issue. Um, sorry, and then I'd like to. Just wanted to know, sir. Does it come with a training mode? Is there a training mode in DocuSign? No, design? but you can you can send as many as you like. You don't have to do any of these. You can send out like this is not a this is not in training mode. This yeah. these are all pretend. I was showing someone the other day. I did mutual release pretend. Um, so you can create as many envelopes. Like I said, uh, I have someone in my branch that used this to sign her daughter up for camp and had her daughter sign it by adopting initials. So. It doesn't have to be for real estate. It can be for whatever you want. Um, I've heard that that uh, DocuSign, let's say there's ever an issue in the future, the court looks at the document, whatever. DocuSign has the computer number. That okay, so that's what I'm about to show you. So, and, and yep. if 
I guess, yes, they could because anybody could have access to that email and it could be a husband and wife and only one person's home and they're signing it as both. Yeah. In that instance, I mean, technically with two email addresses, you could say that, that the same person. So if you go in here under other actions and you view the history, in the history, you can see in here what happened when. So you can see in here when I created the envelope, when it was sent, what IP address it was sent from. Um, so it was created then, it was sent, it was done from the same IP address. Jane, the administrator, saw it, and that's her web ID. So this is what you kind of need for um, court purposes so to speak. This would be your history and this would show. Because obviously these are not my signatures, so it's saying that I opened it here and from this web address, from this IP address. So I'm doing it from the same computer. It knows it's from the same computer. Um, so in that instance, I'm sure, yes, they could say, well, it was done from the same computer, and yet the husband and wife could be sitting right next to each other. Um, but I guess they could say that if that's what they wanted to do. But the fact is, the reason that we're doing this is because they want to buy a house or they want to lease something. So it's the selling of it. It's pardon? <laughs> the selling of what? Like if, uh, if, if our client was selling a home, say it's a divorce situation. Yeah. <laughs> but if it's a divorce situation, I would think you would have two separate emails and maybe they wouldn't be sitting at the computer beside each other side by side. No, I know. So, and I, no, I'm just thinking that that's where that would come in handy if one person suddenly decided to dispute. I would never, if it was a divorce situation, I would never send it to the same email address with two separate names. Um, I would make sure that, you know, even if I had a second computer and I was using my other computer, I'd have a different IP address than the one that I'm on right now. It would show that it was two separate computers. I mean, you can get into all kinds of devious things, I'm sure, if that's, you know, the motivation, but this isn't meant to be devious, you know, meant to help assist in, uh, in your business so that you have less driving around and less time spent. How did you get into the history? Uh, so when you're in other actions, you can go view history. But you have to be in the wrong I know you can do it from within. Right now I'm just in what I was looking at. Yeah, my completed document. So let me go to DocuSign now. So... Uh, now I'm in DocuSign. So this is what DocuSign looks like um, when you're not in WebPoint. So like I said before, you don't have to use this just to create a document. Um, you could have been sent a mutual release from somebody, which is the example that I'm going to give, and now you need to get it initial. So once you're in WebForm, or not WebForms, DocuSign, um, you can do all kinds of different things from within here. So I have 35 completed um, documents within here. You'll see a bunch from yesterday. You can go in here, you can see the completed information that I've done, when they were done. You can move them, you can create a copy of it. So if you were done um, and you need to put the date, you could create a copy of the, the one that you already have and then edit it. You can delete it if so um, someone was saying what if you you know don't want that anymore you can just go in and delete your old ones to keep it all nice and neat if that's what you're interested in. Um, and then in here you can say okay on here I want to know the history and then that is your you were asking that, correct? So once you're in DocuSign and you have it completed, you can have your history within there, and that shows you when it was all done, by whom, and what IP address. So like there was a signing location? Yep. They had to accept to allow DocuSign. Yes. Right? Right. Sorry? 
No, I just don't get why they ask that because it's missing into your I can't remember any of these. Right. right. True. I guess they just want to know in advance that you know. This is the main envelope and document. Okay, so let's start on there. So I'm gonna go back home. So this is what DocuSign looks like. On the right hand side, you can click edit and you can add information that you're interested in adding, like your photo and other things like that. Okay. Um, in here, you can see if you have any envelopes that are waiting for an action to happen. There's another one where, uh, meaning I have action that's required of me. Um, waiting for others is okay, you're waiting for your clients, you sent it out, you're waiting for others to complete the document. So, I always suggest to save the document that you want. So if you get an email on your personal email from another realtor, it could be a mutual release, it could be a waiver, it could be um, an offer on sign back. So um, I would save it and I've always saved it to my desktop first. So I save it as a PDF to my desktop, okay? Are we good with that or people need me to show you? Yeah, how do you, how do, you do that again? Okay, so. If I am in my personal email, so let me go here. Um, here, there's a thing here. Not being able to know my daughter's appointments are, but that's okay. So right there on your PDF, you would click download. Okay, and then for me, it would show up. Um, well, here. So I'm going to download it. It's going to show me here. You can open it. Okay, and then I would have to do this again. And where do I want to save it? I would save it to my desktop. And I would call this whatever. I'm going to call it this, okay? And I would save it to my desktop. Now this document that I want to do onto DocuSign, um, is on my desktop saved. I just put it on the desktop and then I delete it out afterwards so that I don't have a thousand things on my desktop. Okay, but I find it easiest for people when they view it this way to see. So you log into DocuSign, so I've gotten the instructions that you download the PDF to your desktop, which allows you to upload it. Uh, you log into DocuSign, you click Manage at the top. Under Manage, you would click New, the red, and you hit send an envelope. That's just what they call it. Uh, when you go from web forms to DocuSign, you don't see any of this because it's all done for you in the background through um, web forms. So, but again, this is a new something that I'm not creating out of web forms. So I'm just going to <coughs> take my PDF and upload it in. So I'm going to hit send an envelope. In here, it's going to say, okay, what do you want to put in the envelope? Well, I'm going to upload a document. Oh, yeah, I don't have anything on here. So, I don't know. What can I choose? How? An offer to lease sample? Where? Down. Down? Yeah, no, I know that was mine, but that's my daughter's appointment. I forgot I'm not on my own computer that I normally teach on, and that's where I have my PDF. Let's use the offer to lease sample. Let's hope there's nothing private in here. Okay, so it's 13 pages and it says sample. So we're okay. We're not going to do all 13 pages, but this is the document that I want to use now. Um, so now that I've hit upload and I know that I have my 13 pages, I can either view the document, but I know that I just saved it to my desktop, so that's what I want. So I'm now in here under add recipients. I'm going to add Jane Saltmarsh, who's my administrator, but I'm pretending that she's my tenant. Um, and then I'm going to add myself here now. And I am the realtor. And I probably don't need to sign anymore. Um, so I could just put receives a copy, but just in case I do, um, maybe I forgot my initials on the first page or on the, uh, maybe I forgot to sign the confirmation of co-op. I'm not sure what's going to be in this lease, but, uh, or you can just put receives a copy. Yeah. Let's say you do do that. Pardon me? Let's say you do do that, and there's nothing to sign. 
Will it show a new document to you? I do not believe it will. Because I haven't put anything in there for it to well, sign. There's nothing. there's nothing. So I think it would just know and, and be done. But we can find out because I won't put anything in. It won't be a test. Can I just ask a question? Sure. Back to the signing order. Yep. Wouldn't it be good practice right at the beginning as an agent to make sure that you initial, you sign, and you date everything that you need to and then send it to the client? I'm not sure how they would like me to answer that for you. I guess you could. I never have. Because to me, it just makes sense to get your initials and your signature they and your date out of the way. For yourself as because the um, as, as the realtor? As, as the realtor, because you're, then you're going to get a notification that it's gone to your client, correct? You're going to get a notification that it's gone to your client, whether you do that set of signing order or not. No, but what I'm thinking is to save time rather than to have to go and download everything and sort of resend it to everybody. You don't have to download it and send it to everybody. But You're putting it, everybody in the one envelope. But when it's completed, didn't you download it? No, everybody's everybody got their copy from your side. But if you didn't sign it, you'd have to send them a copy with your signature. Yes, if you missed something, you would have right. to send everybody a completed copy. So I'm just saying, wouldn't it be good practice to do that right at the Sure, beginning? if you'd like to do that, you're free to do that. Okay. Yeah, I've never set the signing order because here's an example. If you had three people and you made yourself the first person um, and you, you did it and then you sent it out and you have a husband and a wife and the wife's in a meeting for four hours and the husband's at work for two, uh, and then he's flying out. He's not getting that email from the wife who's in a meeting for four hours. Because she's set for number two. After she's done doing her signing and whatnot, he's on an airplane and now he gets sent the email. So there are certain circumstances. If you want to set a signing order, you're free to set a signing <laughs> order. To me, it just makes sense because I always know what the, where they are if they're going on a plane. Like, you know that kind of thing. Right, you know? so totally up to you. Yeah. If that's what you want to yeah. do, you're free to do that. But yeah. once you set a signing order, yeah. it's a signing order for everybody. Yeah. It's yeah. not just, I want to sign first and then it's a free for all. To me, it just makes it clean, you know. So. It's clean either way. I get an email right away for me to for me to do all of my stuff. And then it tells me when my client's opened it and it tells me when everybody's opened it and viewed it and then you can even send reminders in here to say, oh, here I'm emailing it again. You're taking too long. <laughs> so again, you can put in your message that you would like sent. You can click next. Mm -hmm. And now you're back into your document of what needs to be done. So um, I'm not sure what this is for, but let's just say that Jane needs to initial at the bottom of this for all of these <coughs> but I'm not going to do 13 pages but you know what we don't like this insurance clause so my client is not paying for insurance okay so what you can do and if somebody here is using it and has a better way of doing it I am all open because I am not an expert in this I I can I can do it but I'm not uh, in any way formally trained in this <laughs> okay so you would put a text box okay here you can make your text box whatever size you want so if I do not want any of this I have my text box now Jane does not want this in so I am going to under my text strike it out and you can see on the screen how far it strikes out. You only have 4,000 characters, so you would want to make sure that that fits all of your strikeouts. Um, you can actually do it in the PDF. Say that. Do what? Strikeout. Yes, you could do that if you wanted to. Before you save to this PDF, you could edit the document. But I find when teaching this, it's easiest just to do it all within. Okay, so I am doing that, so let's just make this a smaller text box. But you get the idea, correct? Sorry, I'm using a computer that I never use. So, 
it's just delayed. So you get the gist of it, correct? Now I would need my client to do an initial. So because they're, oh, sorry, I forgot something here. Oops, the initial can go here. because She does need to initial that I've made this change. But in this text box, and I do have it in the instructions, but I'm sorry if it's confusing. I was trying to type it out so that it made sense to people. But Jane, for this text box, it's a required field, but she doesn't need to fill anything out. So I'm going to uncheck required field, and I'm going to make it read only so that she can't change the strike out. She doesn't need, it's not going to ask her to type something in. If I kept it as a required field, it wants Jane to do something. So I just want to make it read only. I want Jane to initial, so you can see that it's still yellow, and that means that there's an action for Jane to do. She needs to initial that section. Now, somebody mentioned about, for example, and I don't know what this is going to have at the end. Okay, so this has here, the landlord hereby accepts the foregoing offer to lease dated at the municipality of. So, <coughs> We would want whoever we're sending this to to put in an area where they're located. So you can put in a text, or not a title, a text box. And I can put that right here. And I can see that this is for Jane to figure out um, where she is located. <laughs> You can go in here and say this, if you know that she's going to date it today, you could just do your date signed in here, or you could put boxes in if you wanted and do a text box, and then she would have to fill out each one of these. So it's up to you. If you don't want her to have the automatic date that DocuSign puts in, and you want her to fill in each box, you would put a bunch of text boxes here with the year, with all of that, and she would have to fill it in because it's a required field and it's yellow. Does that make sense or did I confuse everyone? Because I was confusing myself when I was trying to do this. So that's like a confirmation of acceptance. That's like the confirmation. Sorry, that was you that was asking that. Yeah, so that's like the confirmation. I'm just saying like that is That's how you do it. Right. For confirmation right. of acceptance. So you would want them to put where they were yeah, when they signed at the time, the date, yeah. all of okay. that. Because the date stamp does not have the time. Um, some companies do have the time. Um, I took mine off because the date ended up being this long. and. Yeah and it started covering um, everything up. So if you want the time by your client, then you should put in a text box and keep it as a required field. And then that is something that they need to fill out. So I'm gonna put in a required field from me so that you can see what it would look like as the realtor. So let's pretend that um, it's me here. And I'm gonna put in a text box as if I have to sign. So I'm going to show you what your client would sign because I can't log into James. So I will just put a text box there. You can make it as long or as short as you would like. <coughs> you can do a text box here. And then for the year, myself personally, although this is covered, I would not make that a required field. I would make that read only and I would put the year. But that's up to you. So I took that out as a required field for the year so that my client wouldn't have to fill that out. Yes? Uh, yes, when, they, when the party signs the date again, and you mentioned about the time, they forget to put the time in. And that document is sent back to you. When is that recorded to document? Yes, it's recorded in the history. Time? Yes. Because if you got to court, time wasn't there. And they say, well, I didn't put a time in. It's irrevocable. It's gone, so there's no deal. Right. How are you going to prove it? It would show on the history that I showed you after the document, so I can show you where you would find that again. No, but it would show the history when she sent it. Yes, exactly. it shows the history of when I sent it, when my client opened it, when my client initialed it, when my client, everything your client does. It shows the date, the time, and the IP address that it was done at. But that's only when she sent it back. No, that's when she was clicking on her computer just looking at it. No, but I, I understand that. So okay. you said it, but she hasn't put a time yet. She 
but her signature. I completely understand what you're saying. And so she sends it back to you, but I'm putting the time and you're telling me that the time is still recorded. Really. She, really it's recorded it. in the history of your document. It's not recorded on your document. Uh, Does that make sense? I think what you said before is if you have a field that's required, you can't send it, you can't forward that document. Right. Where the field so if you put that in, it is a required field, she's, she can't get past it. I'll show you that in a minute when I hit send. So are we all good to say, okay, we've uploaded the document, I put some signatures on here, we crossed out an, uh, something that we didn't want. You could add a text box in and type out a whole new clause if you want. Okay? But just remember to have your client's initials. Can you format the text box to only receive certain, like, if it's a time, only time? Uh, it's not, I'm not that advanced. Okay. I do not think so. I think it's just the, can you do the time to make it a required field and format the text box? I'm not sure. You, you can add, actually, a drop down to AM or PM. Right. So you, you can choose you that. You can do that. Yes. Yes. Uh, when we are sending an offer to uh, present an offer to the buyer, so I'm sending an offer to the seller, yep. and uh, they okay, one shot, they're going to accept it. Okay. Right? On the uh, part that they're going to sign and put the date and time, uh, if I don't put a fill over there, there's a text yep. or something, it's not there, it's empty, right? Uh, when I send the offer to them, are they able to add a text, I mean, edit that? If they have their own DocuSign account, then they could do what you're doing, uh, but they would have to complete what's already done here and then and then change it from within their DocuSign. I'm going to say the easy answer to that is no. So they most, have to, they although have more and more clients are getting DocuSign for other reasons. So uh, do I have to put that field there or just leave it blank? So if they choose to accept it, they can just... Uh, complete whatever is required, all the, all the signatures, initials, and then upload it as a document. Yeah, and then you can have them, go yeah, ahead. I think, I think what I was, I was thinking along the lines, is there, is there the ability to send it, so there's a review and edit, so that the realtor on the other side can do that? No, but what they can do is when they receive it on your behalf, like when they, when like this example, I'm pretending that we've received this from another realtor and we're doing a sign back now. So uh, you'd have to save it to your desktop. That's the way I did it. Save it to my desktop and then upload it into DocuSign. Okay, and then, so let me just, so I could keep going, but I think if I just do this, maybe it'll answer yeah, some questions. Exactly. And then at the end, if you have any questions, yeah, right. then we can stay and others can go and get yeah. their business done with that if somebody, if a client forgets uh, to change the A and P and I pick up the wrong one, does the history take precedence? Yes. Well, I, I would I would assume so, but um, you would be able to see that it was done with a required field. Right? So I'm, I'm just going to continue and then at the end, sorry. Which would you say is there's no drop down for A and P? That's when your offer is being done. In web form. No, you were, just, you were just talking about when it was confirmation of. Uh, right. So you would need to. They would need to fill that in. So I, let me send this to myself, and then you'll see what I mean by a required field, um, and then Jane will get this as well. So that's now the. So I'm going to say sign now. It knows that it's me, and that I already have an account. So I'm going to hit continue here. This is my offer to lease. So see how here, I can't go any further without typing something in. It's saying this is a required field by you, Debbie. You need to type something in. So I am going to say that I'm in Richmond Hill on this, and I think it's a 22nd, isn't it? Yes. Okay. And then you can't see it because this has X's, but it already says 2018 because I put in my little box and typed in 18. So that's not a required field. So now I've typed in all of my, um, oops, sorry, where did it go? All of my required field. So now I'm done. I didn't put a signature for myself. I could have, 
But now I'm done and it says, I, I probably should have put a, a signature, but then I could have put my signature and I could have put the date as well, her date signed. Um, so that's a required field where are the ones in red and that the one that I put in myself here is then. So technically you could put in 22nd of February if you wanted for your clients and they just need to put in where they're actually signing if you knew that that's where they were going to sign it right now today. Okay. Oh, uh, well see, because I'm the realtor, I don't need to initial that. Okay. But I'm gonna say that that's, this is a lot of pages. Oh, well, it doesn't show for that for me, but it will in the end, if I did it right, let's see. Okay, so hopefully Jane's doing her end. I can close this down. Um, Okay, so, so is your administrator getting this now? Yeah, she's getting it right now. No, I already called her this morning and said I'm sending you a bunch of documents. I need you to fill them out and then send them back to me right away. So I can see here that uh, I sent it out at 1108. I've done it. And then Jane right now is viewing it. To tell you when they're viewing it? Yep. So we haven't seen that yet. So I'm going to close this. Do you know if the whole industry is leaning towards this not to sign? A lot of people, yeah, the world seems to be doing it um, <coughs> through DocuSign. What's the difference between DocuSign and Accenture? Uh, well, they're all different. Uh, we as a company adopted DocuSign. It seems to be most accessible. I don't know about all of them. Some are priced, some are. Um, what you're able to do. Some are you can only send so many envelopes. Um, where their information stored, how it's stored. Um, but when you're in web forms, and if I go here to return to my transaction kit, if you are going to do um, any of them, certainly these ones that are provide that are uh, are with. Um, Korea are the approved suppliers for us because they follow all RICO rules. Like for example, in document storage, according to RICO, a copy needs to be kept in Canada. Uh, so in Ontario, so DocuSign has servers that also store the information. You can store them on your laptop uh, if you wanted to download all of that information, but there's certain rules and regulations and DocuSign does follow all of those. So let me see if Jane is done. She might, oh, there you go. So Jane's done, and here's my completed, the completed document. I'm hoping that I get this. Okay. So this is a copy. Let's check. Did we get 11? No. So that's because I hit something wrong. I can show you. It wasn't 11. Was it? No. 16. There, there. So there's 16. Sorry, I kept looking at 11. I guess no, I should 16. be able to read because it didn't say insurance. But so this is scratched out, and Jane has initialed that she's initialed that change. So then when sent back, the other side would need to initial the change. Uh, but it has been, it, it has been, now you can put X's. If you put X's, it's less legible to read, and it looks more scratched out. Um, those are your options. You can put in a text box and add a clause if you want at the end. For example, like changing the amount of the offering. Price. Like a price, right? Yeah. yeah. If you're going back and forth, then obviously you need to change the price, right? So you would need to cross out the price in a text box over top and insert your new price that you would like it to be. Does that same, with, same with landlord or environment. Same with, yes. If you're doing an irrevocable and you're sending it back, then you would need to put a box above seller with your buyer and change it from seller to them and your date and timing. What is the number under the signature? That is that is the DocuSign. That's how that's like your unique signature with DocuSign. Because these aren't your signatures, correct? Possibility 
when I send you the document, I choose the same type of sign. Everybody could choose the same signature? No, no, no. I do understand. Okay. But with time and date, the same time when they click on it, cleans the date and time. Is that a possibility? Uh, well, you would have to check with Terry on that. So I yeah, do no. the document. Terry. No, no, I'm talking about the document sign. Yes, you can have the time and the date. As a company, we chose not to have both the time and the date because it makes it super long. So we just have the date. So if you need something time and you need the time on there, then that's where we recommend you do the text box. And you have the uh, person on the other end um, fill in the time that they're signing it or approximate time because when you do go what in is here. the full max of the time? It is the Ontario time or? It's always wherever the property is and where you're located. So if it's a property here, then it's it's the time that it is here. Okay, this document is back to me. How can I edit that? Pardon me? If this document, let's say you have this document. Yep. It's okay, Well, you probably could, but then you need initials, right? No, I have to. I change it, I can upload it. Yeah, you could do however you want. You can print it out, scratch it all out. No, print it out. I do understand yep. that because of the security. Because they check it, you cannot change anything on this file. Well, you can if you. So, this envelope, for lack of better terms, it stays the same way that it is. If you want to change it and you download it or you put it, save it on your desktop as a PDF and open it with another, what did you call it, Adobe professional, professional? Yeah. then you could go in there and you can change it to whatever you want, but it does not take away your envelope that stays in DocuSign originally the way that it was all signed by everybody. No, I do understand. What then I'm not sure what the question is. How, how do you edit this one after back to you? After the, you can I sign it? Yeah. Back, it, back to you? I would, I would save it as a PDF. Okay. And then upload it as a new envelope. How do you change it? How do you edit it? Like I just showed you through a text box. I can show you again, but I just don't want to keep everybody up. I just, I just want to point out something. So, go ahead. Let's say you send the file to somebody who's not comfortable using the document. They're able to print that out. Yes. Yeah. So, what is the name? It's a print document. Initial and sign where they have to. And then scan it back in. And then. Why? Sorry. Excuse me. So, if you're. If your client does not want to swap the sign, first of all, then just send it from web form. But, and right, you can email it and they can print it out and scan it. Or they can print it out, sign it where they want to, scan it and send it back to you. Um, but he's saying that if they did do that and they wanted to print it out and then scan it back to you, they can and it would stay under the same envelope. We had one case where we had one client sign it and the other one got to sign it. Right. We scanned it, put it in. So you can, yeah. Back, yeah. So for example, let's say you send it out to your client and they weren't happy with that insurance. They can then take a ruler, cross it out, make a slip, scan it back in, and there you go. And then you would. You are going to buy this service because you want to have some tools. You are middle of highway. Like a way you have to do something. Right. Then you can find a scanner that are going to shut the side door, who is sitting there. Right. So you don't have a phone. You don't have a computer. You have a scanner on your phone. What? You have a scanner on your phone. What scanner is that? Here's the thing. Yes, you don't have to do it that way. And you can alter stuff. I did show you how you can alter stuff. And I can show you again after. But I just don't want to keep people that need to go on about doing their stuff. Under here, the other actions, under view history, when you were asking about what it tell you, dates and time, you can go play around with it. You do have to play around with it. If you've never used it, it can be overwhelming and it's actually um, quite simple. Oh, the internet's gone out. Oh, there you go. I guess that's the end of that. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. Yeah.